Hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming today. Um, it's really exciting to have um, Damien with us today. So um, before we jump in, I just wanted to give an acknowledgement of country. Um, so I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're all coming from today. Um, I'm acknowledging from the Wurundjeri lands um, and I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past and present. Um, so just to introduce myself before we get into the questions, my name's William Ward Bowers. Um, I'm a person with a disability and I'm coming in with some advocacy experience um, and lived experience um, within my work in the disability space. So um, I'm glad to be here and to um, try and guide this conversation. Um, over to you, Brooke. Um, I'm Brooke Cannum and I am a person with lived, ex lived experience with a disability. Um, I'm from Perth, WA. Um, Work with Inclusion Australia is good um, for my work and to understand how things work in our systems. I'm glad to speak to you today. Thanks, Brooke. Um, so today we are talking about the voice to parliament and um, we will find out what the voice to parliament is today and why we are having a vote about it in 2023. Um, so to help us understand it more, I would like to introduce um, Damien Griffiths. Um, so Damien is a Waramai man and is a leading advocate for human rights of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability. Um, Damien has been in the centre figure of establishment for both um, Aboriginal Disability Network New South Wales and FPDN, which is First Peoples Disability Network. Um, so Damien represents FPDN at regional, national and international forums. In 2014, he won the Tony Fitzgerald Community Individual Memorial Award um, at the Australian Human Rights Awards. Um, would you like to say anything, Damien? Oh, well, thanks for having us. Um, thanks for having me, William and Brooke, and lovely to meet you both. And uh, it's really wonderful to be here. It's a real privilege. Um, I thought I'd begin by also acknowledging the country in which I'm speaking to you uh, from today. So I'm speaking to you from Darug country in Northwest Sydney. Um, it's a lovely sunny day here actually. And we also like to acknowledge two of our founding elders, Uncle Lester Bostock, who was a proud Bundjalung man, and Auntie Gail Rankin, who was a proud Nunanjiri Ghana woman from South Australia. So we like to acknowledge them and thank them for their wisdom. And uh, acknowledge also that you're on Noongar country there today, Brooke. So, Lovely, lovely to have you and, and love to meet you too, William. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. We're really happy to have you here. Um, over to you, Brooke. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about FPDN and what you do? Sure, Brooke. So we're a national organisation like Inclusion Australia. Uh, we represent First Nations or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability and their families. So we're about being a voice for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability around Australia. Thank you. Um, we wanted to um, hear from you um, about the referendum um, because this year it's happening and um, it's a pretty big deal. Um, could you tell us a bit more about what a referendum is? Yeah, that's a great question, William. A, a referendum is about changing the Australian constitution. So one way to think about the Australian constitution, it's kind of like the rule book for Australia in a way. Uh, and in that, it sets the, the, the way that Australia should work as a country. 
So a referendum is called when there wants to be changes made to that kind of national rule book, if you like. Referendums don't happen very often um, and they are difficult to win. And usually what happens is Australians of voting age, so any Australian over the age of 18, is often asked a question, uh, do you want to make this change to the Australian constitution? So referendums are very, very important. They're an opportunity for all Australians of voting age to have a say about changing the Australian constitution, about changing the rules, if you like, uh, for the country is, is, a, is a good way to understand it. Yeah, that's a really um, insightful way of putting it. And, you know, it's a, a basic human right, I think. And um, I think it's a fight worth fighting, to be honest, because it's it should yeah. just be across the board, I think. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I think to follow up on that, um, I guess we want to know why is this particular referendum happening um, and what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, so this referendum, so we've, we've talked about what a referendum is and now there'll be questions asked of Australians. Firstly, do you recognise... Uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people or First Nations people, but in this instance, it'll be called Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. First Nations, First People, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people all mean the same thing. That recognising Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the first Australians. So we would say, well, that's just a fact. So the Australian constitution or the Australian rule book should say that. That, that's just a fact, yeah. you know. It's not even, it, it shouldn't even be, well, controversial or shouldn't even be something that is an argument, really, uh, because that is a fact. So people will be asked whether they say yes to that or no to that. The second part of the, the referendum is asking Australians if they support the idea of a voice made up of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that will talk to the Australian Parliament. So we know the Parliament as being that place where the Prime Minister is and yeah. all the politicians are. So giving um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people an opportunity to have a voice in that system, which has never existed before. And also it's about um, having the opportunity, or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people having the opportunity to talk to the Australian Cabinet. So what do I mean by that? The cabinet is all the ministers who make decisions about all sorts of different things. So having an opportunity to talk directly to that area as well. So two areas, if you like, the Australian Parliament and the Australian Cabinet and giving voice to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people so they can have a say in those systems. Um, that's never existed in a formal way. So by putting it into the Australian Constitution or the Australian rule book, it stays there forever. At the moment, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people only have a chance to have a say when they're kind of asked to, if you know what I mean, and, and if the government allows that. This is about creating more, I guess, security, more for it to stay in there forever. So that's why it's really important. There's a whole lot of reasons why Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people need a voice. Firstly, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people don't live as long, yeah. uh, have much worse health outcomes. So what I mean by that is worse health, really. Um, we also have a, a very high um, population of mob with disability, so Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability who don't often get access to say, the National Disability Insurance Scheme or yeah. um, a lot of our community members live in, you know, in, in situations where, you know, they don't have housing or some people in our very remote, um, so people outside the cities often have trouble getting food on the table, for example. So that's why it's really important, this referendum, to 
make changes, better changes, so Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people can one day live the same life that people that aren't non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander live. Yeah, that would be um, that would be like ideal that everybody just lives, you know, like lives a life and nobody's less fortunate than others. And you know, I think that's totally reasonable. And um, yeah, thank you so much for that insightful um, answer. Over to you, Brooke. And that that came across very strongly and very yeah, good. Thank you. Um, what is the voice to Parliament? What would you, what would it do? That's a great question, Brooke. So what it will do is provide advice. So talk to government, talk to the Australian government, talk to ministers. It doesn't run services though. It doesn't do that. What it does is provide advice or talk to government. Uh, that's really important to understand. So it won't go out and you know, run a disability service or anything like that. It's a voice. It's about creating a place where Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people can be part of where the power lies in Australia, in the parliament and in the cabinet. So, um, but it's a very important step forward yeah. uh, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Well, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, so the next question we wanted to ask is um so we've heard about something called the uluru statement from the heart um i don't know if i butchered that or not um yeah, but yeah. um can you tell us what this is sure william um so the uluru statement of the heart from the heart was based on a lot of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people coming together in Uluru. So Uluru is the centre of Australia. You know, it's that beautiful, uh, amazing rock that sits in the heart of Australia, eh, in the middle of it. And a lot of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people came together and talked about a voice, talked about a way forward, talked about things like a treaty, talked about truth-telling. Truth-telling is about talking about the real history of Australia. Um, as you know, when we think about it in terms of disability, we all know there's been some really bad treatment of people with disability in Australian history, eh? People were institutionalised, grew up in institutions, were treated really badly. And in a way, this is a similar story in the sense of, well, we've got to tell those stories. We can't pretend it didn't happen, you know? We can't pretend that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people were treated really badly, just like we can't pretend that people with disability haven't been and still are treated really badly. So the idea was there was a, a, a statement. So people came together and came up with some words to talk about what they'd, to, to describe what they'd been doing in Uluru. And it's a very powerful statement. It's, it's strong on emotion, but also on how do we move forward as a country? How do we move forward as Australia where we give proper place for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people? Yeah, it's so important for people to understand that. Um, thanks, Damien. Over to you, Brooke. Um, why does the voice matter to First Nations people? Yeah, another great question, Brooke. Um, well, I'll, I'll take that from the perspective of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability. So um, one of the things that happened in the work that's been going on to try and plan for how a voice might look is that we have talked about at the First Peoples Disability Network that there needs to be strong representation or a strong voice of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability in the voice structure. So that's why we're um, supporting it. And we expect that uh, if the referendum is successful, there'll be a place for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability to have a strong voice within that voice structure. So that's really important. 
Thanks, Damien. Um, so why does it matter to people who are not from a First Nations background? That's a great question, William. I think it's about who we are as Australia, as a country. Um, it's also about recognising our past, you know, that there are stories that still need to be told that are about what happened to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and what still happens to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It's also about recognising that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people were here first, but it's also about coming together as a country, as all Australians to move forward together, um, to, to, to go forward together and keep working on making a better country. Um, because we can always improve as a country and this is a really important step along the way. Um, and it's also about uh, recognising the past and moving into a future together, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's so important that, yeah, it's captured in that really, like, meaningful and I think if, if people understood that, then, you know, the vote would um, really be a meaningful and collaborative, like, working together kind of thing instead of it being segregated. Um, yeah. So when is the referendum vote happening? Well, that's the, the great question, but um, I'm actually heading to Adelaide this afternoon because tomorrow we have a meeting of the referendum engagement council in Adelaide and the Prime Minister will announce the date of the referendum tomorrow but every indication or everything would suggest that it's going to be on the 14th of October but that will be con confirmed tomorrow so um, but I, I would think the plan would be 14th of October so we're not far away so in in a lot of ways we need um, inclusion Australia and we need people like yourself, Brooke and William, to spread yeah. the word, you know, and to, to talk about it with people, to let people know what it's about. There's a lot of people that are telling, telling fibs, to be honest, uh, and uh, making things up. So what's really important is to try and get the information that is real, you know, and uh, make your decision that way. Um, and things like this conversation uh, are really important because we can talk about it together and come up with um, ideas together going forward. So, um, yeah. but it's going to be really important. Um, Aboriginal people themselves are only three and a half percent of the Australian population. So we make no difference in terms of the vote. Um, most Australians, it's just the rest of Australia that will, will determine um, yeah. whether this is successful. So, uh, it's sort of over to Inclusion Australia and your members and your friends and your family and all that to, to make the difference. So, Thank you, Damien. Over to you, um, where, where can I find out more information? Yeah, that's a great question, Brooke. So we've got a website called Have Your Say, Have Your Say, and on there we've got more and more disability accessible information. Also, um, Inclusion Australia and others are starting to work on plain English information. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the internet. I think the thing to, in my opinion, I think the thing to do is go to places where you can trust the information. So there's a lot of, lot of funny stuff out there on Facebook, on TikTok, that is not official and I think it's also about being careful where you get the information from. So getting it from official websites, getting it from Inclusion Australia, get it from First Peoples Disability Network, um, the government websites. Um, yes, 23 is a good website. Our website, Have Your Say, is another good, good website. So, um, And it's good because you then need to take your time and, and think about it and think about what best you want to do. But... There's also a lot of funny information going around that's not true. So um, it's important to understand that. Absolutely. 
Um, yeah. And yeah, thank you so much for that. It's definitely worth like talking about where that information's coming from and how it comes across to people. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so important um, because as we're all aware, like media can come across in many different shapes and sizes and it's um, yeah. sometimes not always the most effective um, thing when it comes yeah. to, as you said before, fibs, like that's not very helpful at all. So um, just because I'm aware of time, um, we wanted to ask you um, to finish up is what is one thing that you would say to people who don't know um, what to vote um, with the voice? That's, yeah. So I would say get get information about it from people you trust and from places you trust, that's really important. Um, also, by giving voice to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in a formal way in the Australian government system means that we can create a new Australia, which will then hopefully give more voice to people with disability yeah. in Australia. It's got the opportunity to change the way things are done. Um, and it's also about what's deep in the Australian heart, if you like, that still hasn't been uh, dealt with. You know, we have to, you know, like any relationship, even with our families and friends, um, if you don't deal with things and they stay there and, you know, they become harder to deal with and they create tensions and things. So in a big picture sense, that's what Australia has to do is recognise that you know, we've got to talk about these things that, that happened and, and then all go together, go forward yeah. together. Um, and I think that's the really great opportunity we have here. The only other thing I would say is it's over to you guys. Um, you and your friends and your family are the people that will make the difference. So Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people need the rest of Australia to join and, and to lead actually because our voting power is small the Australian disability community voting power is very big so and very large so um, we would hope that everyone comes together and uh, and we'll be having community forums around the country and we'd really love people to come along to those and it'll be up on our website and we'd love to see people there but um, thank you for the opportunity it's been William, wonderful to talk to you William and Brooke been really great it's been so insightful to hear from you. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Over to you, Brooke, to wrap up. Um, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Damien. Um, we really appreciate you taking your time out of your day to speak. Um, yeah, thank you so much once again. And, yeah. We're, we're definitely yeah. knowing who we're voting for, and it's a big yes. Um, so, um, yes. yeah, thank you again. Thank you, William. Thank you, Brooke. Really enjoyed Thank it. You. Good to see you both. Good to see you too. Thank you. See you. See you.